In a season where the Wolves have been horribly disappointed by some of the team's most seasoned players, those of us holding on to hope have shifted from viewing this season as one to prove ourselves to a season to build towards the future. Obviously this is disappointing because this has been the focus of the Timberwolves franchise for about 15 seasons. It's becoming rapidly apparent that the Wolves don't have much to look forward to for this season. With our draft pick over in Golden State being top 3 protected, maybe leaning into development isn't such a terrible idea. Look, I'm sick of losing like everyone else, but frankly with Carl having played just 4 games this season, the play never really got off the runway, so that helps the pain subside a little bit at least. So in the true art of tanking, <coughs> I mean uh, player development, uh, let's take a look at some of these younger players who have shown up, some of our particularly disappointing veteran players. Let's take a look at the future. Now Towns, D'Lo, and Bees are by no means old, but here I'm particularly focusing on first and second year players. And before we get into that, Jordan McLaughlin and Jalen Noel are both second year guys, but I don't think I've seen enough of either guy to really assess where they're at. Given that D'Lo, Ant, and Bees are going to soak up all of the garden minutes for the foreseeable future, I just don't think I have enough to work with in regard to those two guys. But there's been some flashes from both of them, so we shall see. Also, this video is supposed to be positive, so absolutely no Jarrett Culver talk in this one. Now, let's get into it. Obviously, chief amongst the Wolves' first and second year players is the number one overall pick from this last draft, Anthony Edwards. Ant has shown a lot of confidence on offense, putting up double digit field goal attempts in all but three of his first 19 career games. His efficiency is not great, but it's very common among rookies as the jump from college defenders to NBA defenders is a tough one. Ant's game has yet to round out as his three rebounds and two assists per game on 25 minutes are certainly lower than one would hope for. Defensively, he's been solid, especially as an on-ball defender. He's getting less than a steal a game, which is roughly the statistical clip I would want, but the eye test would tell you he's been a solid defender. A trio of 20 plus point games have been the flash points for a decent rookie season. His most recent 20 point performance, a 23 point night, saw him lead the Wolves in scoring, tied with Beasley at 23 points, uh, in just his second start, and actually helped us secure an elusive win. Ant has a lot of room to grow, but he's currently leading rookies in scoring, and while well, he hasn't exploded onto the NBA scene the way some may have dreamed of, he has been a consistent presence for the Wolves, and he's showing early signs of steady development, and that's really encouraging. <laughs> Okay, okay, I know Jared Vanderbilt is technically a third-year player, but come on, he averaged four minutes per game in less than 30 total career games through his first two seasons, so give me a break. Plus, hey, I'll take basically any excuse to talk about the guy at this point. I love watching him play. If there was an all-NBA hustle team, I would die on the hill of Vando deserving a place on it. Undersized for a power forward, Vando has averaged six boards per game since Ryan Saunders realized that Jake Lehman stinks and gave all of his minutes to Vando. More impressively, Vando's averaging 1.5 steals a game and almost a block per game since gaining those consistent minutes. The sorest stat for Vando is his brutal free throw shooting, which is just at 46%. Who, who is our shooting coach? How do we have Jared Colvin? and Vando, and Jaden McDaniels all shooting sub 60% from North. Jesus Christ, who, who's in charge of that? Whoever it is, fire him. Vando's very costly clunking from the line led to the Cole Anthony. I'm just gonna stop, I'm just gonna stop. You already know. And I don't have the strength to speak on it. 
Vando has been a solid contributor for us on defense, and he's shooting 63% from the field. So he knows his role, he stands on the dunker spot, he attacks loose balls, he's not going to be a star, and frankly right now he probably wouldn't start on any quality NBA team, but depending how he continues to grow throughout the season, he could find a way to factor into the Wolves' rotations even beyond this season. Oh, and by the way, he should 100% from three-point land. The go. A true bright spot for Wolves fans through a brutal, gloomy season. Nas Reed, apparently nicknamed Big Jelly, according to Basketball Reference, has impressed thus far and looks to be the backup center of the future for the Wolves. In the absence of Carl Anthony Towns, Nas has split the big man minutes with Ed Davis, putting up 12 and 5 throughout the season on 22 minutes a game, while also swatting away 1.6 shots a game. Nas has a well rounded stat sheet, and the most exciting metric about Nas is the three point shooting. Well, he's not quite Carl, because literally nobody is. He is shooting 38% from three this season. The spacing he provides gives Bees and D'Lo and Ant more room to operate in the paint. Nas's 20 point performance was one of the driving forces in a rare Wolves W. Nas, who went undrafted in 2019, outscored Zion, who was drafted number one in 2019 in that game. A huge moment for Nas's career and one for the doubters. That must have been a really special night for the big fella, so take that for data. Since health and safety protocols removed both Cat and Hernan Gomez, Jade McDaniels has cracked our rotation, averaging 20 minutes per contest in their absence, and he has impressed so far. It's very limited data, but the main reason I felt inclined to discuss Mac Daddy is the defense. Averaging 1.3 blocks and hustling his heart out, the eye test alone will tell you he is impressing. He's also shooting 35% from three this season on a very limited clip, putting up just over two a game. If Mac Daddy's stroke comes along and he can provide spacing and defense from this four spot, he could be a game changer for the Wolves. Spacing and defense are the top two things I want from a power forward to complement Towns. Now, McDaniels definitely needs to chow down on some McDonald's because this young fella is very slender at 184 pounds. He's only 20 and should fill out a bit, but size is somewhat of concern in matchups against stronger fours, but either way, I've been thoroughly impressed with Mac Daddy. And between him and Vando, I would feel no pain to see Jake Lehman and Juancho stay in their warmups for the rest of the season. Ant-Man, the Vandalorian, Big Jelly, and Mac Daddy. I like all four of these guys, and I hope you like my videos if so give me a like or a subscribe it means a lot to a small growing channel like my own and your support can help me grow up to be big and strong stay lit and thanks for watching